Hey Snowboard Addiction, Tavis here. I'm with a snowboarding specific trainer, Jeremy, and he's going to walk us through a few exercises. Yeah, I'm excited to share some insight. I've worked with Olympic athletes all the way down to weekend warriors, and I'm pretty keen to share some ideas for your snowboard training. It should be fun. We're going to go and target a lot of muscle groups that you really need for snowboarding and really get our bodies primed so we can tackle any obstacle on the mountain. All right, so for this workout, we're doing a nice concise version of our snowboard preparation. So what we're gonna start with is some mobility and then move on to a little bit more dynamic uh, movements, okay? Awesome. So the first one we're gonna do is a cat-cow. So we're gonna come down onto hands and knees. This one's just to mobilize your spine. We're gonna do a big arch with the spine, flexing chin to chest and then a big U coming the other way, looking up to the ceiling. So we're gonna do 10 repetitions. So coming up, squeezing your abs to flex the spine, and then coming down, looking at the ceiling, getting your neck involved with the whole movement. So allowing your um, spine to flex and extend is super important for snowboarders because you uh, are always gonna be in positions where you need to be in a good athletic position, but if you lose your balance or if you take a deep landing or anything like that, the spine needs to be able to flex and extend. So let's do two or three more of those and then we're gonna move on to other mobility exercises. Do I wanna be keeping my core tight the whole time I'm doing this motion? Yeah, you wanna keep it tight when you're flexing the spine into that position, mm -hmm. but when you're extending, you let the core relax and then we're bending the other way. Oh, okay. So you're allowing different muscles of your torso to contract and relax, okay? So now the next exercise is called World's Greatest Stretch. Don't worry, I didn't name this one. And you're gonna be in a push-up position. You're gonna step your right foot beside your hands and you're gonna rotate to the right. And then come back down, hands back down to the floor, step back, and then the other side. So let's do five per side with this one. This one, we're allowing our spine now to rotate after we just worked on flexion and extension. We're also working through our hips. We want our hips to be nice and mobile for snowboarding to keep our lower backs happy and make sure that we can get into all the different positions that snowboarding requires. So that's two on each side. You should feel a good stretch in the hip of that right leg. So in the front of your right hip there when it's back. Yeah, I feel it really like in my back glute and my Ex like hip flexor here. Yeah, exactly. And my, getting it through the torso. Yeah. Uh, what's an important thing to remember when doing this exercise? With this one, you want to make sure that your back is flat while you're doing it. You don't want to dip and arch. And then when so you're want to yeah, like exactly. knee down. And you want your back leg straight. So that way you'll feel the good stretch and you're getting your hip into a good position. So let's do one more on that side. This is a good, um, accomplishes many different mobility goals in one movement. You don't want to go, especially in a short workout, you don't want to go, you know, joint by joint all the way down your body, otherwise you're going to spend your whole time mobilizing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the goal. So yeah, one more on that left side, and we're going to move on. So the next exercise, if you come back to the back of your mat, this one's called an inchworm. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow ourselves to flex at the spine. We'll get a hamstring stretch. And then you're going to walk your hands all the way out until you're in a push-up position. And then walk all the way back, keeping your legs straight and standing up. So let's do five for this one. This one, hamstring flexibility is important for keeping your low back happy, keeping your knees happy. And then as you're walking out, we're training the arms, the shoulders. In each step with the hands, you're going to stabilize your shoulder and work on um, the strength of that joint because though snowboarding is mostly a lower body sport, we do have instances where we land on our shoulders or where we put a hand down, so we need the shoulders to be stable, otherwise um, we could have issues. Is it all right if I let a little bend in my legs when I'm coming off? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling the stretch sure. a little bit there. As your hamstrings get more and more flexible, that should be uh, 
easier and easier to straighten the knees. So yeah. ideally straight knees, but it's okay for a little bit of bend if exactly. you're working up to yeah. it. The other thing is this one helps your core strength. So as you're walking out into that position, into the plank, you're keeping your flat, your back nice and flat and not allowing your um, back to arch. So that's strengthening the core. Okay. okay. Let's do one more of those and then we're moving on to a different core exercise. And the slower you do this exercise, the harder it's probably going to be. Exactly, yeah. So you want to balance. You don't want to be sprinting your hands out there, but we, um, we do want to be like in control while we're doing it. Yeah. Okay. So the next core exercise, as we're getting more and more warmed up, is a side plank. So on your forearms, your shoulder is right under, or your shoulder is right on top of your elbow and then your feet are stacked and we're gonna lift the hips up. This one we're just gonna hold for 30 seconds, okay? Okay. So while we do this, we're strengthening this part of our core, our side, and what we're doing is strengthening that hip as well on the bottom side, so your left side right now. So when we do this one, we're making sure that the whole side panel of our body is nice and strong, strengthening the shoulder and um, strengthening the hips as well. Yeah, so, this is one of my favorite ones. Just strengthens all those muscles that are really hard to work out on the abs otherwise. Yeah, exactly. But I've been slacking a bit. I can already feel myself <laughs> trembling a little bit. We'll call that 30 seconds and you can switch to the other side. All right. When you do it, the key is to be almost thinking about yourself as one board. So it's called a plank for a reason. So you want to be nice and straight, which is what you're doing right now. So you're allowing your body to hold yourself in that position and not letting yourself twist or turn and staying nice and square to the wall rather than square to the floor. So yeah, maybe 10 more seconds on that side. And then it's really important when doing any core exercise to just make sure your core is tight and engaged the whole time. Mm -hmm. So you're not just holding the position, but you're actively trying to build muscle. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. That's good. <laughs> so we'll call it 30 seconds there. So now that we've done our mobility, our core is nice and warmed up, we're gonna get into leg strength, which is probably the most important of any snowboard workout. So our first one is a three-point lunge. So you're gonna lunge forward, lunge to the side, and lunge back. So one point, two, good, and then three. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is go forward, side, back, and then forward, side, back on the other side. All right. So forward left, side left, yep, and then a reverse lunge, so stepping back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go, and when you step back, your weight's in the front foot. Okay. Good, yeah, so let's do two of each position. So forward, side, and Oh, back. back. Yeah. <laughs> I always get so confused yeah. on lunges. Yeah. This, I don't know why, but. So the value of doing exercises like this rather than just double leg exercises is that snowboarding has you locked into just your bindings and you can't control, control each leg independently. So mm -hmm. lunges allows you to work on some asymmetry. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So forward, side, and back. Yeah. Let's do one more of each. Sounds good. So right, forward right to the side, nice, and right reverse lunge. Yeah, it's really good. I can really feel it in my hip flexors and glutes. Good. It's really one of the parts of my body is I yeah. want to get the strongest for snowboard season because you use it for so much. Mm -hmm. Left, left to the side, and we're getting the hip into lots of different positions as well, which is going to help our injury prevention for snowboarding. Good, and then the next leg exercise we're gonna do is the most specific to snowboarding, which is just squats. So you're gonna sit into a chair, feet are flat on the floor, and then standing up. So let's do 10 of those. When we do our squats, you wanna be kind of in a, like a snowboard stance. Everyone squats a little bit different. So you don't wanna be too wide or too narrow. And then with um, your squat, you're doing a good job of keeping your upper body posture upright. So we don't wanna be flexing at the hip. Um, we want to be nice and upright, mm -hmm. and then your knees are gently pushing forward, and you're keeping your heels on the ground. So you want to think about your foot as a big toe, pinky toe, and 
heel, making like a triangle on the floor, and we keep even weight between all of that. Uh, do you have a recommended depth that I should be going down? Everyone squats different. You basically want to stop once you feel like you need to flex your spine to go further down. Okay, I can actually yeah. feel that there. I can stay straight, and as soon as I hit there, I start curving exactly, in a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So yeah, let's do four more of those. Two more. Nice, these are good squats. Okay, Working and then it. the last part of our short workout is basically gonna be more explosive stuff. So snowboarding doesn't happen slowly, it happens fast, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do double leg jumps and single leg jumps. So a double leg jump is basically just a mini squat and then jumping for height and catching your balance. Let's do five. All right. Each time reset. So you're gonna jump, land, and stay still, okay? So one. Good, watch your head on the ceiling, gee. <laughs> Good, two, three, four, five. Nice. And then the last one we're gonna do is the single leg version of the same. You won't jump as high, and we're gonna focus on keeping our hip, knee, and ankle in one line, so not allowing your knee to come in or out when you jump. So jump small at first. Once you get a bit of confidence, you can jump a little higher. Let's do five on each side again. These ones really burn. <laughs> Four and five. Nice. Let's see the other side. All right, we'll see if this one I can. Big thing with these ones is <laughs> doing single leg exercises. You'll notice as a snowboarder, your back foot or your right foot, if you're, or your front foot, if you're goofy or regular, might feel different. So that's a good opportunity to work on that weaker side. Yeah, this is my back foot, and I can already tell I have less balance and confidence going into my one footed jumps. Nice. Good. So yeah, that's kind of our short, um, quick workout for just the, the basics of snowboard preparation. Awesome. Well, that's good. I feel a bit of burn in my legs. I'm definitely a bit winded. Nice. Great workout to add into your routine. Quick, easy, well, relatively easy, <laughs> and will work your muscle groups to really help you this winter season. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Jeremy. No problem.